ain't my bride. Let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Now this one's a little bit complicated. You see, at the same time that Carl Benz was out in Mannheim in designing and inventing his car, the Motorwagen, well, Gottlieb Daimler was building a car of his own out in a place called Konstadt. These guys were both engineers. They lived and worked at the same time. They were I mean, they were only a, lived a few miles from each other, actually, and yet they never met or even knew of each other during the time that they were both making automobile history. It's kind of like convergent evolution, except with engineers. What, convergent engineering? I don't know. Maybe. Gottlieb Daimler was born in Wittenberg, Germany in 1834. He trained as an engineer and was keen on petrol engines. He had a working relationship with Nicholas Otto and helped him to develop the world's first successful four-stroke engine in the early 1860s. He was born to be a gearhead and by the early 1880s had his own company and was building newfangled engines for all sorts of things. Now this is where the difference in perspective and goals between Benz and Daimler really comes into play. While Benz was hell-bent on building a car, Daimler really wasn't concerned with what his engines were used for, as long as he could find as many uses as possible. He saw the internal combustion engine as a component to many applications, motor vehicles, boats, aircraft someday, stationary applications, portable engines. If you needed power, Daimler was going to bring it on. Once Uncle Gottlieb was happy that he had a good running engine that he could use for all kinds of things, the first thing he made was a motorcycle. Yes, in 1885, the only hog on the planet was a Daimler. Yeah, this thing is the great granddaddy of all bikes. It's a wooden bone shaker frame. Yeah, that's what they were called. And it has no suspension of any kind, hence the name. But it is a motorcycle. The following year, he put an engine into a car. Well, into a four-wheeled vehicle. Basically, he took a horse wagon and converted it into a car. And it looked like a horse wagon, with an engine bolted on and the steering not really figured out yet. But it did go, and it proved that not only was the concept viable, but his engines were very reliable and adaptable. By 1889, Daimler was in full production in Konstadt, and he had gathered some help. Gottlieb managed to bring into his company an enthusiastic young engineer by the name of Wilhelm Maybach. And little Billy had some great ideas. In the same year, Daimler unveiled their new car, designed by Maybach, at the Paris World Exhibition. The Konstadt Daimler Phaeton was finally designed to be a car, rear-engined with a 566 V-twin engine, also of Maybach's design, and this car was the star of the show, it, as it was a four-wheeled car, as opposed to the three-wheelers offered by their new and original competitor, Benz. Also, the engine was well-balanced and pretty torquey. So the French said, Monsieur Gottlieb, can we make these? And Daimler replied, Yeah, I license you to make my engines. That's all I really care about. And so Panhard and Levisor were born. <laughs> and one William Maybach got really pissed at his boss. Now the exact extent of the disagreement, if not feud, between Daimler and Maybach is up for discussion, but the basic issue at hand was this. Maybach was, by the mid-1890s, the number two guy at Daimler and worked directly with Gottlieb. Maybach was good at it and enjoyed engine design, which Daimler had hired him for. However, Billy Boy was even more of a gearhead than, than the Uncle Gotti was, and he wanted to make a great engine for a great car, and then make and sell that car. Uncle Gotti didn't see things that way. He wanted to make a great engine and let someone else make the cars with his engine. That way, he could have dozens of makes of cars all over the world dependent on his engines, and not just cars, but boats, bikes, whatever. Now, I'm not going to take sides here. Both have good arguments. 
Obviously the big boss won, and although Daimler did make some cars through the turn of the century, the real focus was on the power plant. Engine size doubled and so did the amount of cylinders. But the cars themselves were still not particularly well engineered, or at least not well styled. And so the company made its monies by selling their engines or licenses to build their engines for whatever purpose. In 1896, a group of investors in some strange place called Coventry, England, uh, led by a man by the name of H. Lawson, managed to purchase not, not only a license to build Daimler engines in England, but also license to the Daimler name. Now this is typical of Gottlieb's uh, business practice regarding you know, licensing built engines, but rare in the sale of the name. And it would be only five years later that this license would be all that would be left of the Daimler named company. But we'll go into that into another episode. The end of Canstat Daimler began in 1897. When they introduced the V4 5507cc Phoenix race car designed by Maybach. This thing was a monster of an engine put onto a car that was just unwieldy and wrong on too many levels. But at that time most cars were unwieldy and wrong so that wasn't necessarily out of place. But the engine was freaking awesome and a very wealthy and influential man by the name of Emil Jelinek buttonholed Maybach probably in some dark alley somewhere, and basically said, hey, you build me a race car, low, light, sleek, and faster than hot jelly. You build me that, and I will sell it to every rich noble on the planet. Now, this guy, Jelinek, was a gearhead with tons of money and connections. I think he was like consul general of the Austro-Hungarian Empire or something like that. But... What that meant was that he was the Amazon.com guy for rich people of 1900 wanting to buy nice cars. He wanted his own car to sell to all his friends, and Maybach was, in his opinion, the guy who could design it. Maybach worked for Daimler. How do you solve that problem? It solved itself when, unfortunately, Gottlieb Daimler passed away in 1900. Now, his son Paul did attempt for, to continue to build cars for about another year, but it, it petered out. Wilhelm Maybach had made this arrangement with Emil Jelinek to build these cars, and that project still needed to be finished, even though the figurehead, Gottlieb himself, was passed away. And in 1901, they finished the project, and the car was unveiled. And Emil Jelinek loved it. And in fact, what he did was he sold it to all of his friends because this car was revolutionary in every detail. The way it was built, the power of the engine, it was low, it was sleek, it was fast, and it influenced automotive design for generations to come. Emil chose the name of the car and after 1901 and 1902 the company itself was changed to the name of the car. And of course, he named the car after his youngest, precious little daughter, a little girl by the name of Mercedes. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History. We'll see you again next week. Peace.